the spindle, the shuttle, and the needle from 50 fairy Miss Fairy Tales. There was once a little girl who lived with her godmother in a small cottage at the far end of the village. They earned their living by spinning, weaving, and sewing, and the child grew up to be very industrious. When the girl was about 15, her godmother died and left her the cottage, the spindle, the shuttle, and the needle. The girl lived alone in the cottage, and everything she did turned out well. Whenever she wove a piece of cloth, she immediately found a per purchaser who paid her so well that she had plenty for herself and always could keep a spare little for the others who were poorer. About this time, the king's son was looking for a bride, but he was not allowed to marry a poor wife, and he did not want a rich one. So he said, my bride must be at least uh, be at once both the richest and the poorest. When the prince arrived at the village where the girl lived, he asked the people to name the richest and poorest maidens in the place. They named the richest and then told him that the poorest was the young maiden who lived at the end of the cottage at the end of the village. The young prince went first to the rich maiden and found her beautifully dressed sitting before her door with her hands folded in her lap. The prince bowed politely and said not a word and rode to the house of the poor maiden. She was not sitting idly at the door, but was in her little room working busily. The prince alighted from his horse and peeped into the neat cottage. At the moment, a ray of sunshine sparkled through the window, lighting up everything inside. The prince saw a maiden spin at her spinning wheel. Presently, she glanced up and seeing a noble looking gentleman peering through her window, she blushed cast down her eyes and continued spinning until the prince rode away. Then she rose and opened the window, saying to herself, how very warm the sun is today, not realizing that her own blushes, not the sun, had made had seem warm. She watched the handsome stranger until he was quite out of sight, and then she returned to her spinning wheel. However, her thoughts were now on the handsome prince, although she did not know who he was. Strange ideas came into her head, and she began to sing curious words, which her dear godmother had taught her. Spindle, spindle, out of you, bring me home, my lover true. To her surprise, the spindle leaped from her hands and rushed out of the house. She followed it to the door and stood looking after it with wondering eyes, for it was running and dancing merrily across the field, trailing a golden thread behind it. Then she took up her shuttle, seated herself, and began weaving. The spindle, meanwhile, kept on its way, and just as the thread came to an end, it overtook the prince. What do I see? He cried. A thread behind this spindle will lead me to good fortune, no doubt. So he turned his horse and followed the trail of golden thread. The maiden who was still working on thought of another rhyme taught to her by the old woman, and she sang, Shuttle, shuttle, weave, I pray, a carpet for my lover gay. Instantly the shuttle slipped from her hand and ran out the door. But on the door still it stopped and began to weave the most beautiful carpet ever seen. Then the maiden sang, Needle, needle, sharp and fine, fit this house for the lover of mine. As soon as the, she said this, the needle sprang from her hand and flew about the room quick as lightning. The table and benches were quickly covered in green cloth and the chairs in velvet. The curtains hung at the window. The needle had scarcely finished the last stitch when the maiden saw through the window at the plume of the prince's hat. He had followed the golden thread until he reached her cottage. He alighted from his horse and stepped in the beautiful onto the beautiful carpet. When he entered, he saw the maiden, who was still in her homely dress, but as lovely as a wild rose. You are exactly what I've been looking for, he said, both the richest and poorest maiden in the world. Will you come with me and be my bride? She said nothing, but smiled shyly and held out her hand. The prince took it and giving her a kiss, led her out of the cottage, seated behind her, behind, behind him on his horse. He took to his father's castle, where the wedding was celebrated with great feasting and merrymaking. The spindle, shuttle, and needle were placed in a treasure chamber in the palace, and the girl cherished them as long as she lived.